Here, Wrestling Observer Live, I'm Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Dave Meltzer joining us here. Dave, we've gone over the basics of this deal in the opening segment, so your thoughts on how this affects WWE and the future of this network? Well, the network itself is just moving over to Peacock. I mean, as far as future of WWE, I mean, the stock price should go up. Profit should go up. Um, for the consumer, it's better in the sense that you can, a lot of people will be able to get the whole thing for free. Um, and if you're not, you know, a, a, there's there's different there's diff, different ways to get um, Peacock for free. But if you're not, which essentially if you subscribe to Comcast and some and uh, Cox, certain services, and even if you don't, it's four ninety nine, dollars um, So it's half the price. So it's a benefit for wrestling fans. Um, it's, you know, it's a great deal for WWE. They're getting a lot more money. They're getting over $200 million a year for what they had previously gotten about $132 million a year for, and that number probably would have declined slightly each year. So it's an absolute positive for them. It's um, They don't have as much pressure to put on content. They can cut back on and will and are cutting back on costs in the network, you know, as far as like the staffing and things like that that they had before. So it's a much more profitable thing for, for WWE. I know that the employees of WWE Network are freaking because, you know, they had no clue about any of this. And um, and why would they? Why would they? They just had a big staff meeting a couple days, you know. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, but, 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 uh, last week, nobody had a clue. No, nothing, no hints, no nothing. Although, like... A lot of people knew this was coming, and it's not this exact thing. I mean, look, we talked about the idea of selling the pay-per-view rights like UFC did with ESPN. They talked about and this on the investor's call. The investor's call, they had talked about it. Look, they tried to make the deal last year and might have, you know, might have been able to if the pandemic hadn't come. Probably not, though, because it was cutting, cutting close. It looked like they weren't going to be able to make that deal. So instead of just selling the pay-per-view rights, they're selling the network as a whole. Um, you know, I mean, it, it feels like the idea it's, it's, it creates a we, some weird alliances because now the SmackDown and Fox is a very weird thing because they're going to be pushing all these pay-per-views that are on Peacock, which is, you know, the rival network. So that's an uneasy alliance all of a sudden. Um, but I mean, as far as, you know, for, you know, it, it creates, you know, look, NBC Universal should probably buy the thing in a couple of years with the money that they're giving WWE, that they're not giving, but they're, they're spending on WWE each year. I mean, it pay for itself in about seven, eight years. Um, and then they would guard against any increases in rights fees and stuff going up, going up. And, you know, they would share international growth and things like that. So I think that that this could be a step in that direction as well. Uh, you know, Vince can get, you know, Vince would be able to get, and I'm, I'm talking about at, at a $6 million price, not a $4 billion price. At a $6 billion price, all the money they're spending, you know, they could make up it for that in like eight years. So it's really worth it to them at this point to buy this thing. Um, but I mean, you know, as far as for the fans, I mean, it's good and it's bad. It's cheaper. Um, you'll be able to get the content cheaper. It's bad because the pressure on the company as far as producing good content will be lower than it's ever been and it's already low it now makes it even lower because before you know you wanted to put on good television to build good pay-per-views so you would increase network subscribers now you're getting 200 million a year no matter how many subscribers that you have and no one's going to know better because it's part of this big conglomerate at peacock so there's, you know, that's just some of the things. There's a lot of intricate stuff. I was surprised they sold the whole network. Um, you know, I mean, when you look at this as compared to what the deal that UFC had with ESPN in five years, the UFC deal is so far superior to this. Um, but for fans, uh, this deal is much better because you don't have to pay for pay-per-views. With UFC, you still have to pay for pay-per-views, but the value of the pay-per-views now is astronomical when UFC's deal with with ESPN is over in five years, unless UFC collapses in five years, which I don't expect to happen. Um, that next deal for pay per views is going to be, you know, probably every bit of double the the first deal. And for for WWE, when this five years is up, I don't anticipate the next deal for WWE to be double because number one, it's going to be a hassle getting everything off of Peacock. Um, and back 
to, to you know back in house um, or to another network. So I mean, it's it's it, but it's 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 good and it's 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 good in a sense. But I mean, it also is also the sign that streaming is going to go the way of television in the sense of it's going to be a couple of big people controlling everything as opposed to what it looked like even three years ago that everyone you know every everyone you know whether it's a ufc or a tna or a, or impact or or a wwe or a new japan would have their own service now it looks like the key is is to you maybe start your service and sell it off to somebody because um, WWE and UFC and, and to an extent UFC have both already done that. Yes, Mike. Well, it, David, it seems to be that you know Barrios and Wilson. Obviously, their plans and what they had intended for the network is different than what WWE's vision became. Uh, with what Nick Khan has done as far as his work at CAA and uh, helping to negotiate the Fox deal and then now him coming over and I would assume having a lot to do with, with getting this, was this Nick, over. Th this was Nick Khan's deal. Absolutely. I was going to say, so does Nick Khan, I mean, if he does nothing else now, obviously not forever, but, you know, has he already kind of earned his keep and really earned He's his already earned his keep. company? Nick Khan's already earned his keep with this one deal alone. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And he, he's really valuable because he's got he's really smart. And, and it's not knocking Barrios and Wilson, but he had so many more sports connections and entertainment connections as well than they did. So he had connections to be able to not that they couldn't have made this deal, but he he probably saw it coming quicker than they did, because, you know, obviously their goal was to build the network itself into this standalone product that would carry the entire company. And it never got as big as they expected. But now, as far as revenue goes, um, you know, I mean, they, they're they getting the revenue equivalent of not quite as many buys as they, as, as uh, you know, subscribers as they expected, but more than they will ever get. You know, I mean, that's the one thing. They're never going to be able to gross $200 million dollars in the United States on the WWE Network. That was not going to happen. Um, and, you know, they are now getting that, and it's guaranteed. You know, product goes down, interest goes down, guaranteed. They also have NBC even more. You know, like, well, we were just the other, you know, this week we were talking about, you know, you know they don't have the, the, the leverage with NBC, and that may hurt NXT on Wednesdays because, you know, of the NHL. Now, now um it's not so much they have the leverage on NBC. NBC's got the leverage on them, but NBC's going to want to do everything for WWE because of a more important property to them. It's not just Raw and we'll take NXT. It's um, Raw and this very important component of Peacock, which they're looking at as their future. It also creates a situation very, like talking about earlier, so the SmackDown situation gets very interesting. Will Fox want it? Will NBC... NBC, you would think, would want to get it back badly. That may lead to an increase. If Fox still wants it, that may lead to an increase in, for, for SmackDown, no matter what the ratings are, just because you got multiple bidders all of a sudden. And, and with NBC, they're going to want the whole thing. You know, I'd probably at prelude to an attempt to buy the whole thing. Because once they own, you know, if they have Raw, they have SmackDown, and they now would have the network, they might as well just buy the whole thing. I'd say it's a pretty good indication that they're not uh, negotiating with Disney right now for a sale. Um, oh, boy, could I tell you some stuff there? <laughs> I will just what I what I can tell you. What I can tell you is is that um, I, I believe. Okay, I th this is this is this is conjecture. This is my conjecture, and then later what I'll tell you is not conjecture. I believe that there's a good chance ESPN was part of the talks. I believe three weeks ago, ESPN knew they weren't going to get it. That's my conjecture. What I do know is that ESPN has pretty much shut down any WWE right now. No more, no more WWE uh, content on ESPN. Right. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.